partway through this installation in the uh, the rear room of a typical Sheffield terraced house. It's got an off-shot kitchen, which we've matched up to. We've taken the colour um, and got it, got the paint mix to match. And this is an example of a project where we've uh, we've really offered a design service to the customer who's not been sure how to make best use of the space. So I've sat. So I've sat with them and gone through options for all the different spaces thinking specifically about what's stored where and trying to keep things of a certain type together. So example, for example, we said, right, let's dedicate that alcove to your coats, your shoes, your bags. So that's all accommodated in there. And then this one is sort of the overspill of the kitchen where they, they want to keep their coffee maker, soda stream, cookery books, and a bit of extra crockery um, because the kitchen itself is, is fairly small. Uh, then we've got the main units, which is going to have uh, board games and other odds and ends and I think that's that's your your junk drawer that everybody needs So the way that we build stuff in the workshop, I've touched on it before, but I'm not usually in the workshop to take the videos. Uh, so I thought it would be quite good just to talk through in a little bit more detail than perhaps I have done before about how we make these units. We use 18 millimeter MDF for, for all of the parts, including the back panel. So this is the shelf unit that's about to be put up next to these other ones here. We often substitute the shelves for uh, 22 or 25 millimeter MDF, except on fairly small units. And if the customer wants the slim look, like on this one, we keep it at, at 18. The countertops generally are 22 millimeters because I think it looks better to have a bit more weight on the countertop. The brand of MDF we use is Medite. And our rule is for any part that has an exposed finished edge, that will always be MR, moisture resistant MDF, which is denser and sands more easily to a, a good paintable finish. For any part that is uh, that doesn't have exposed edges, so either a back panel or a side panel that's gonna get a cover strip on it, that's just the standard MDF, which with the Medite brand is called um, Premier MDF, but it's just your standard, really. Uh, so all of the parts on a unit like this are MR, apart from the back panel. Now, the reason that we keep 18 mil for the whole thing is the rigidity of it and the assembly method, where we start by cutting the back panel square. So that, that's our template for the size and squareness of the unit. When it's all assembled, after preparing and pre-spraying the parts, the back panel is laid on the workbench, and the first thing we do is fix one of the side panels to it, which we do using Craig pocket hole screws. And the reason for that is that the whole assembly then take, can take place with the back panel face up, and there's no spinning of heavy units. Sometimes you've got one man, usually Brady, uh, assembling quite a large unit, and he doesn't have to turn it over much to do most of the assembly. So the screws we use are for the side panel, uh, so yeah, the side panel going into the back panel, um, 32 millimeter Craig screws. Now I love these screws, they have a lot of uses. They self tap very well, they're self cutting, and the size of them is just right for, for this purpose, but it's also, being somewhat less than 36 mil, it's just perfect for quickly securing um, 18 millimeter boards to other boards. So we use them. We use them for um, securing the carcass up to the worktop. Well, the worktop to the carcass, I should say. We use them for securing carcasses 
side by side to each other. So uh, here we just can very quickly drive, just self drive a screw like this in. And the, the self tapping nature of it combined with the wide pan head means with no piloting, you get a very tight, uh, very tight pull, very tight joint. Um, and for, for those kind of uses, they're so out of sight that personally, I think it's fine just to have this quite tidy head visible and I don't usually bother countersinking or filling, but it does depend on the job. Uh, so those are some of the uses of that. The other use of that is when you've got a run of units that are sitting on top of a countertop, we will again pocket hole it because it's such an easy way of securing this down to the countertop. Sometimes we'll have a divider in the middle of a pre-assembled unit like this one that we want to secure. The way I did that was to mark the position of it with masking tape, lift the unit out the way, drill a pilot hole through so that I could then find that hole underneath and put a screw up. When I'm doing that, I use a self-tapping MDF screw. Now, this is a very specialized screw which, which will go into the edge grain of MDF without splitting it. This is a Spax M screw. Not a lot of places sell them. I get them from Ironmongery Direct. And that spear point will clear the material. That'll clear the material and not split the MDF, which is quite a rare thing for a screw. So that's an easy self-drive screw. Now, the third screw that I want to tell you about, which you just saw the head of there in this unit, is a, uh, a Compfermat screw. Um, both of these last two screws I've talked about, we use the 50 millimeter length. This one I like because it acts like a dowel. There's, there's some width to it. If you see that compared to the, um, the Spax one, that's the Spax one. It's quite thin. The comp for that one is, is like a metal dowel that's also threaded. But that has to be pre-drilled with a special stepped drill bit, which you can get from Hayfully, which is where we buy these screws. Um, we've settled on them because we feel they give the, the strongest fixing for uh, shelves and, and most of the other parts of a pre-assembled unit apart from the back panel. Uh, they also allow disassembly and reassembly because they'll find their way back into the, the drilled hole pretty well. When we're then assembling these pre-assembled units on site, I used to always screw them together. In fact, years back when I started, I would glue everything and then it was just excessive and unnecessary. I'd, I'd even be gluing the screw joints. And then occasionally I'd have to take something apart and it was a nightmare and I realized it was unnecessary. I then moved away from glue, gluing and sort of screwed everything, um, but then decided with units like this, it's such an unnecessary waste of effort to, to screw through, then either cap it with a sort of um, emphasized but tidy cap, which is one approach, or fill it um, and then try and try and get a finish as good as the original sprayed finish, which is almost impossible when you're doing that on site. So I just thought, well, why not, why not glue them? So we do now glue them because we get such a good finish. So they're simply glued and clamped with, um, we use this Gorilla wood glue, which is quite similar to tight bond, which is what I used to use. So the, so the method for that was once we'd leveled the base unit, screwed them together, fitted them to the wall, put the countertop on, we then positioned that central unit, measuring off the sides based on the drawings, measuring off the front, getting it all parallel, um, screwed that down, as I said, with the Craig screws and with the spack screw up to the divider, um, left it with a, we usually design for a 20 millimeter gap to the wall, that's just how we do it because that matches the base unit, which allows for a skirting. Although in this case, there wasn't a skirting, but it's just our standard because sometimes the walls lean. So you can see that one does and 20 mil always accommodates the worst lean or bulge in the wall. So we just design everything around that. You've got a void there, but then your, your cover panels on the side are oversized with an extra bit of scribe. So they'll always cover that gap and um, just finish it off, make it fully fitted. back 
here to finish off about three months since the previous footage, which must be a record. The reason is that the flooring hadn't been fitted before and the plan was always to fit the final trims, the plinths and the scribes that stop at the floor, on top of the flooring. When the flooring fitter came with the engineered wood flooring, there was still too much of a level change in the floor, although it had been leveled off by the builder by propping up joists. What he found was in this long run to the kitchen, there was a, a bit of a, a change in slope so that the boards that were running from there, by the time they got to here, were popping up about three quarters of an inch. So they had to change to a different type of flooring. Um, it's a sort of uh, vinyl, I think. It's a, it's a thinner type anyway. And the flooring company had to, to do some more leveling to the floor. And it was all very delayed because we're running up towards the Christmas rush and everybody's booked up. So that's why I'm back so much later. Um, what I did before when I had all my tools out was cut all the parts scribed to width, but just over long. So for example, this scribe I know is gonna just go straight in and fit to width, but the length will just need a trim. Two more things to talk to you about. I've never noticed this before, but it seems like putting the door in this arrangement, there's a little bit of a vacuum effect, which is preventing it swing open as much as it normally would. So that's what I expect from a tip on mechanism. Mechanism's the same. It just seems to be prevented from swinging as far as it could. Not a big deal, but I prefer them to just swing pretty much right open. The other thing is with this unit, I got lucky that it's sitting tight to a vertical pillar, but the customer wants to see this doubled up effect mirrored here. So I thought I could get away without a scribe, but I see their point and I'm going to oblige. It does mean I don't really have to cut the scribe. I can just use it, I can just use it on edge. And what I'm going to do is use some um, pink grip, which I've been experimenting with. So I'm talking about the, the white solvent free variation. Uh, I'm gonna stick that either side and clamp across the pillar. And I'll put some bracket fixings at the top of the unit and possibly a screw through at the bottom if I find that I need to, but I want to avoid messing with the painted finish. Um, I'm using the pink grip because I've, I've just been finding that it grabs very quickly, whereas the stick saw that I often talk about stays pretty flexible for, for some time, but probably does make a better flexible cork if you're putting it in a visible joint. Um, the pink grip, I tried on a couple of these scribes here, and was quite surprised at how it locked into place in a, in a good way pretty quickly. I did just use the cork once cork for the front of the gap um, and used the pink grip onto the carcass. I'm not sure if I mentioned already the feet that I've used on this unit because it wanted to be open bottomed for the bin to go in there. They're this type of feet that screws up into the edge of the 18 mil and rightly or wrongly, because you need that leveling gap, I just made the decision to put the uh, cover panel and now the scribe with that gap off the floor. 
which the customer seems to be happy with. Mm -hmm.